Okay, so why we cannot keep the endotracheal tube for more than five to seven days in a patients? After five to seven days, we assess whether we can extubate the patient or if the patient is still require an ET tube in place for mechanical ventilation, continuation or for the protection of airway, we then try to switch to tracheostomy. And then tracheostomy can be kept for very longer period of time, for weeks and even months also. The cuff pressure remains the same, it's the same in the endotracheal tube and the cuff pressure is same in the tracheostomy tube also. So what is the difference? So understand, the major difference in the endotracheal tube and the tracheostomy tube is the passage through the larynx and vocal cords. So ET tube goes for, to the oropharynx, then the larynx, glottis and the vocal cords. So oh, if the ET tube remains for a very longer period of time, it can cause permanent damage to the vocal cords, the vocal uh, fold paralysis and it can lead to dysphagia and aspiration pneumonia. Also, because it is passing through the glottis, so it can, which is the narrowest part of the airway, it can cause uh, subglottic stenosis, which which presents with the strider later on. While the tracheostomy, it bypasses the vocal cords and goes through the cricothyroid membrane, it passes the vocal cords, so vocal cords are safe. And also, it is a little lower, so it doesn't cause it that much uh, subglottic stenosis. So now you know that's the major difference. Other complications remains the same with both of them. So do read more about it.